Now let's turn our attention to the Netherlands, where a political storm is brewing. They've just had a general election. It was a snap election, called because the Prime Minister had decided to step down. That's Mark Rutte. He's, he was Prime Minister for 13 years. When he chose to step down, an election was called. The election took place yesterday, and now the results are in. The big winner is this man, Geert Wilders, often called the Dutch Trump. A conservative politician with striking blonde hair. That's definitely some similarity. But of course, there's more to him than parallels with Donald Trump. And that's what we'll talk about tonight. Wielders and his track record. Also, what his victory means for Europe. This man is famous for two things. The first is his anti-immigration and anti-EU stance. Listen to this. The hope is that people get their country back. That we make sure that the Netherlands is for the Dutch again that we limit the asylum tsunami and migration, that people will have more money in their wallets again instead of spending millions to nonsense, that Netherlands will be more secure again. People expect our agenda of hope, uh, tougher asylum and immigration policy, the people uh, having, getting more money to pay for their utilities and, and, and groceries. That was Wielders after opinion polls said he had won. He promised an end to asylum seekers, an end to immigration to the Netherlands. That was the thrust of his campaign. Also, he wants to stop sending aid to others, no assistance to developing nations and no aid to Ukraine. It may be easier said than done because the Netherlands is part of the European Union. It has commitments as part of the bloc. But Wielders has a solution. Leave the EU. He's calling it Nexit. The exit of the Netherlands, Nexit. He's promised a referendum on it. So anti-Europe and anti-immigration, that's what he's famous for. The other thing is his anti-Islam rhetoric. In 2008, Wielders released a film criticizing the Quran, and over the years, he has spoken against Islam. The biggest threats to our survival today and the threats to our freedom are the European Union, mass immigration, and this terrible Islamic ideology of submission and violence. He also faced a backlash for all of this and threats. He's been under police protection for almost two decades. In 2009, he was denied a visa by the UK. They feared that he would pose a threat to public security. But he continued with his stance. And some in India might remember him over his support for the politician Nupur Sharma. She had caused an uproar over remarks on the Prophet Muhammad at that time. Wielders had extended support to her, even during this current Dutch election campaign. This is what Wielder said, that there would be, and I'm quoting, no Islamic schools, Qurans, and mosques in the Netherlands. Slight problem with that. It goes against the Dutch constitution. It promises, the constitution promises freedom of religion and expression, and Wielder said he will not breach Dutch laws after he won the election. It will be horrible for, for many things. It will be... Uh, horrible for anyone uh, who has a different background than like a white Dutch uh, background. That was a representative from the party that finished second. The Netherlands has 150 parliamentary seats. 76 is the magic number to form the government, but reaching that number on your own is almost impossible. The Dutch have a system of proportional representation, which basically means that a coalition government is necessary. So while Wielders won the election, he got only 37 seats. He needs allies to become prime minister. We will collaborate with other parties because that's what we like and we'll show that we are able to do it. The Dutch citizen deserves it that the Freedom Party is in the next government and it will happen. Who would join his alliance? There are plenty of candidates. Remember, Wielders is a career politician. He's been in office for about 25 years. He's made a few friends in that time, like his former party, the VVD, the party of the outgoing prime minister. During the campaign, they had indicated that they might tie up with Wielders. And then there are other possible allies, parties that have hinted at wanting to join his government. So a coalition is quite possible. But it will require Wielders to compromise because no other party wants to leave the European Union. So will he, he abandon his dream of Nexit? We'll have to wait and see. He'll definitely have to be more diplomatic to keep a coalition together. His victory has made one thing clear, though. The anti-immigration rhetoric has won. This is what the Dutch have chosen. And the EU cannot dismiss it. They should think about what this result means.